Joining us now is Philip Atiba Goff, the co-founder and CEO of the Center for Policing Equity and a professor of African-American studies and psychology at Yale University. Professor Goff, thanks for uh, being with us tonight. You've had a chance, as you always do, to have a, a look at sort of what the public gets, the information, uh, the body cameras, the, the, the things that the mayor and the police chief and, and others have said. What do you make about uh, of this situation in Akron? So you're in Highland Park right now. A uh, single shooter uh, discharged yep. something close to 70 rounds. Um, uh, it was a mass shooting, a catastrophe, a tragedy. These eight officers discharged 90 rounds, nine, zero, 60 of which went into one body. You were talking earlier about how uh, AR-15 style weapons shred the body. It's not like a, a, a handheld pistol, but 60 rounds in an individual. There is no one who is that dangerous. There is no way that you can justify it. It's just grotesque. And so we'll talk about, in the, the weeks and months to come, the failures of training, and we'll talk about the reasonableness standard of, well, they thought there was a gun, and they, he was wearing a ski mask, and, and that led the officers to fear. But what on earth are we going to be able to say that says 90 rounds, 60 of which go into a single body, is the way in which anybody is kept safe? My response to this is the same as most Talk. folks that I see in these communities, which is that this is a ridiculous thing that we pay for to then have to watch someone die that way. So what is the response to the official line from the police, at least for now, uh, prior to there being a full investigation, that we should uh, be considering the fear that the police officers may have had by virtue of the fact that they say a weapon was discharged from the car and he got out of the car with a ski mask. So I want to understand how fear of a potential shooter leads eight officers in Akron, Ohio, to shoot 90 rounds, 60 of which go into one body, and say, well, that's reasonable. But some one individual who shot 70 rounds into a parade said, hey, could you do me a favor and get on the ground? Right? So I understand fear. I've been in positions where I am afraid for my safety. It has never made me act like that. And we saw in the video, the officers were able to make tactical decisions. You see officers put down their gun when someone crosses in front of them. These folks are supposed to have to justify each and every single bullet in a court of law. You can't justify 90. I don't care what the heck the story is. There's not a justification for 90 bullets. So if you were either in charge of or advising the Akron police force today and you were tasked with uh, repairing their relationship with the community, where do you start after something like this? I'm not sure that I do. So in most of these situations, what um, you know, we get asked to do all the time and what uh, many politicians will ask to do is, well, how do we do exactly that? How do we repair the relationship there? How do we fix what has been broken? I got to say, in many places across the country, folks are, not, are no longer asking for better. They're asking for different. They're saying, I don't want law enforcement to respond to a traffic violation. So for instance, in Berkeley, California, right. we've, we found six and a half times more likely black folks getting stopped than white folks, often for pretext. Berkeley just said, we're not going to do low-level traffic enforcement with armed responders anymore. And Berkeley has been now followed yeah. by places like Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Seattle, Lansing, Michigan, Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, and the entire state of Virginia. Yeah. So I don't know that the thing to do here is to focus on how much we trust the folks who are armed and have a badge so much as it is trying to stop responding to things that could turn deadly and shouldn't with non-deadly options. Well, you and I both spent a lot of time in Philadelphia where the, the, the rank and file police were in favor of this. They were like, great, you know what? Get us out of the business of pulling people over for a sticker that expired or a, a light that's not working in the car. It, it doesn't end up well. We don't, we don't want to be in this business of raising revenue for the city by, by pulling people over for petty traffic crimes. Yeah, that's right. If you got a license plate reader, you can tell well that where the person lives and just send them a ticket. Right? In many cities, they have yeah. banned pursuits in cars precisely because folks get hopped up on adrenaline and then they end up getting in crashes. It's dangerous to the officers and obviously can be de deadly to the motorists, but it's not just traffic. 
I don't need a gun and a badge to do mental health well or homelessness well or child welfare the right kind of way. We don't need to respond to crises with potential for punishment and death so much as we need to respond to crises with care. It can be cheaper and it is almost always less deadly. That's not from an ideological position. That's from science. Yeah. And law enforcement and activists yeah. are acting, asking for the same thing right now. Philip, good to see you again. Thank you for being with us. Philip Atiba Goff is a co-founder and CEO of the Center for Policing Equity. He's a professor of African-American studies and psychology at Yale University. Always appreciate seeing you, sir. Thank you for being with us.